In this video, we should share truths about Satan regarding his personality, power, work and destiny. He is the highest being among all the angelic creatures of God. However, an immeasurable gulf exists between the uncreated, self-existent, eternal persons of the Godhead and this the chief of God's creatures. The Personality of Satan Satan was created as a person. The time of the creation of the angelic host is not stated beyond the fact that their creation probably preceded the creation of all material things. And the angelic creation itself was preceded by that eternity of existence of God. In Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 11 to 19 there is a lamentation addressed to the king of Tyrus, and while this may have had some partial and immediate application to a king in Tyrus, it is evident that this supreme creature is in view, for the one here addressed was said to be the sum of wisdom and perfect in beauty. He had been in Eden, the garden of God, probably the primal Eden of God's original creation rather than the Eden of Genesis chapter 3, and by divine design was created and anointed as a covering cherub over the holy mountain of God, which, in biblical imagery, represents the throne or center of God's governing power. No king of Tyrus could fit this description. In fact, this description could apply to none other than Satan as he existed before his sin and fall. In Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 17, the prophet addressed him in this passage under the heavenly title of Lucifer, son of the morning, and sees him as fallen from his primal estate and glory. He who didst weaken the nations is also guilty of opposing against the will of God, and in this passage, as in Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 15. His sin is said to be a secret purpose hidden within his own heart which God discovered and disclosed. By the events recorded in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 15, Satan gains the title of serpent. Also Satan has access to God. See Luke chapter 22 verse 31, Revelation chapter 12 verse 10 as well as to men, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8, Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 12. In Luke chapter 4 verses 1 to 13, the personality of Satan is revealed when in the wilderness he comes into conflict with the Son of God, the last Adam. He who purposed to become like the Most High, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. And who recommended this purpose to the first man and woman, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5, is now seen offering all his earthly possessions to Christ if only he will worship him. This offer of authority and power which Christ refused will yet to be received and administered by the man of sin, the Antichrist, 1 John chapter 4 verse 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 8 to 10. The power of Satan, though morally fallen and now judged in the cross, John chapter 12 verse 31, 16 11, Colossians chapter 2 verse 15, Satan has not lost his position, and he has lost but little of his power. His personal strength cannot be estimated. According to his own declaration, which Christ did not deny, he has power over the kingdoms of this world, which kingdoms he said were delivered unto him, and which power he bestows on whom he will. Luke chapter 4 verse 6. It is said of him that he hath the power of death, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14, but that power has been surrendered to Christ, Revelation chapter 1 verse 18. Satan had the power over sickness in the case of Job, Job 2 to 7, and was able to sift Peter as wheat in a sieve, Luke chapter 22 verse 31, 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 5. Likewise, Satan is said to have made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and overthrew the cities thereof, that let not loose his prisoners to their home, Isaiah chapter 14 verses 16 to 17. Against the power of Satan, even Michael the archangel dared not contend, Jude chapter 1 verse 9. But there is victory for the child of God through the power of the Spirit and the blood of Christ, 
Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 12, 1 John chapter 4 verse 4, Revelation chapter 12 verse 11. Satan's power and authority are exercised always and only within the permissive will of God. Satan is aided by demons. Satan's power is increased by the innumerable host of demons who do his will and serve him. Though he is not omnipresent, omnipotent, nor omniscient, through the wicked spirits he is in touch with the whole earth. Satan's Work Some believe that Satan is the direct cause of sin in every person. This impression is not true, because human sin comes directly from the fallen human heart, Mark chapter 7 verses 18 to 23, James chapter 1 verses 13 to 16, Genesis chapter 6 verse 5. Satan's primary motivation is to be, like the Most High, Isaiah chapter 14 verse 14. He is aiming to construct and realize his own ambition for authority over this world system which proposes culture, morality, and religion, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 to 15, as long as people don't believe in Christ. Since he understands that salvation by grace alone on the ground of the shed blood of Christ is the only thing that will save them, not good works. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 17 reveals Satan's original and supreme purpose. He would ascend into heaven, exalt his throne above the stars of God, and be like the Most High. To this end he will use his unmeasured wisdom and power. Note in particular, 1. I will be like the Most High, as recorded in the scriptures. The activities of Satan following his moral fall can be traced only in the line of this supreme motive. It was this purpose which in all seriousness he recommended to Adam and Eve, Genesis chapter 3 verse 5. And they, by adopting Satan's ideal, became self-centered, self-sufficient and independent of God. This attitude on the part of Adam and Eve became their very nature and has been transmitted to all their descendants to the extent that their descendants are called the children of wrath, Ephesians 2-3, 5-6, Romans chapter 1 verse 18. They must be born again, John chapter 3 verse 3, and, when saved, have a struggle to be yielded wholly to the will of God. Again, Satan's desire to be, like the Most High, is seen in his passion to be worshipped by Christ. Luke chapter 4 verses 5 to 7. When the man of sin enters the holy place and is worshipped as God, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3, 4. Daniel chapter 9 verse 27. Matthew chapter 24 verse 15. Revelation chapter 13 verses 4 to 8. For a brief moment, Satan's supreme desire will be realized under the permissive will of God. 2. He let not loose his prisoners to their home. Satan is now doing all in his power to keep the unsaved from being delivered from the power of darkness and getting saved. It is also revealed that Satan in his warfare will counterfeit the things of God, which is in accord with his purpose to be like the Most High. He will promote extensive religious systems, 1 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 to 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13 to 15. In this regard, it should be observed that Satan can promote forms of religion which are based on selected Bible texts which elevate Christ as the leader, and which incorporate every phase of the Christian faith except one the truth of salvation by grace alone on the ground of the shed blood of Christ. Such satanic delusions are now in the world and multitudes are being deceived by them. The attack against the children of God is not in the sphere of flesh and blood, but spiritually. The believer's mind and conscience are the battlefields. In addition, the believer may not necessarily be drawn away into a morality, although that can happen but he may utterly fail in prayer. In testimony and in spiritual victory, such failure, it should be seen, is as much defeat and dishonor in the sight of God as those sins which are freely condemned by the world. The Destiny of Satan 
Five progressive judgments of Satan are to be distinguished. 1. Though the time in the dateless past is not disclosed, Satan's moral fall, with its necessary separation from God, is clearly indicated. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 15, 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 6. 2. Through the cross a perfect judgment has been secured. John chapter 12 verse 31, 16 11. Colossians chapter 2 verses 14, 15. But the execution of that sentence is yet to be carried out in the future. 3. In the midst of the coming tribulation, and as a result of a war in heaven, Satan will be cast out of heaven and be limited to the earth. He will then act in great wrath knowing that he has but a short time to continue. Revelation chapter 12 verses 7 to 12. Isaiah chapter 14 verse 12, Luke chapter 10 verse 18. 4. For the thousand-year reign of Christ upon the earth, Satan will be sealed in the abyss, after which he must be loosed for a little time. Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3, 7. 5. Having promoted an open rebellion against God during the little time, Satan is then cast into the lake of fire to be tormented day and night forever and ever. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. This is Satan's final doom. If you like this video, please like, share or subscribe. Thank you.